What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Tell Me More podcast presented by Major League Success. Uh, I have Candace Neff with us. Um, Candace is a real estate agent with EXP, only the best brokerage out there. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Candace, thank you so much for coming on today and you know sharing your story. Um, the Tell Me More podcast is all about. Um, just sharing the journey that you took to, to get into this business and then, you know, kind of where you're headed and, and just some of the struggles. Like I'm very passionate about, um, you know, helping new agents specifically or agents that are, you know, just trying to get to that next level uh, in their business. And, you know, if, if I can interview agents and uh, someone else out there in the world can resonate with your story and, and they can make that connection to your story and, and see you know, the light at the end of the tunnel or connect with you. And, and, and now you guys can build a friendship. You know, that's what this is all about. So I appreciate your time, um, you know, jumping on here with me today. For sure. I think it's awesome what you're doing. And I just appreciate you asking me to be on. So yeah, of course, of course. So um, Candace, where we always start is growing up. Yeah, I want to know what life was like when when you were little. Tell sure. me, kind of share a little bit about, you know, growing up, high school years, you know, what was what was life like for you? Yeah. Well, first, I want to start off by saying sorry for any noises. I do live in a construction zone right now. We just <laughs> built a house and there's plenty more going up. And also, my dog's still getting used to all the noises, so he might start barking. So again, I, apologize. Real life stuff here. So this, <laughs> this podcast is the real and the raw. So we're yeah, good. that's right. <laughs> Um, so growing up, um, you know, I, I grew up in a small town, very small town. We had one stoplight. Um, I could ride my bike from one end of the town to the other. And, you know, I loved it. It was just awesome to be super close to friends and family. And, uh, I've always been a kind of type A personality person. Um, you know, was always just trying to be like the good kid, you know, and, and make my parents proud and everyone else. And so growing up, you know, I was uh, heavily into sports. Um, I played, you know, t-ball starting out and then I went into like coach pitch and then little league and then I started softball and then played basketball, volleyball and softball in high school. Um, I, you know, like I said, type A, I was, I, I also made sure that my academics were where they needed to be. Um, so a lot of my life growing up was just honestly sports. Like I tell my parents, I don't know how you guys did it. Like I'm, I'm thinking about my life now. And yeah. like, if I throw a kid in the mix that did what I did, like I, I actually don't even know like how I could function, you know? <laughs> I, I am right there with you. Like I always said, I don't know how people do it with kids, especially kids that are in sports and show homes. And like, I barely could keep up with myself, <laughs> you know, and, and know. my clients. <laughs> it's, it's insane. And I'm like, you know, I have so much respect for parents. Like, I mean, I have, I've always had respect for my parents, but of course they always say like you, you gain more respect the older you get. And so, you know, we were constantly on the move, you know, running, going, you know, like I said, during school sports, during the summer sports, just nonstop. So that was pretty much my life growing up. And then, um, decided to, uh, my college career, um, was kind of, uh, um, I kind of went a little bit all over the place. So uh, my back, my, my story is, you know, you wish that you would have made certain decisions and <laughs> you didn't, and you wish, you know, whatever you wish, if you could go back, you'd do it different. Um, so I lived, um, once my parents, we, we left, um, the little town called Byesville where I grew up, um, when I was 10, I think moved out to what we would what you would consider the country they lived on eight acres we moved out to eight acres of land and and um um <laughs> it's just funny to think about this but um so we, you know we moved moved out there and um we lived about 10 minutes from muskingum university do you know where that's at yep new concord ohio so we lived about yep. 10 minutes from there and so you know grew up from like age 10 to you know high school. And then, you know, when, I, when I'm 18 and I'm in a senior I'm trying to figure out what college I want to go to, everyone's like, why don't you go to Muskingum? It's like 10 minutes from your parents' house. And I'm like, why would I go to Muskingum when it's 10 minutes from my parents' house? Um, <laughs> so um, the, the volleyball coach there had been following me throughout my high school career and wanted me to come there. But I was like, no way, right? Got to spread my wings, got to get away from my parents' house. I got to experience, you know, the college thing. So I didn't end up going to Muskingum. Um, I ended up going to West Liberty University. And instead of playing volleyball, I played softball there. 
Okay. Okay. So where, where's where's Les, where's West Liberty at? Um, so it's um West Virginia. So it's actually like if you go take 70 east all the way like past like um well, I don't know, like if you're going St. Clairsville like, and all that wheeling, kind of wheeling area, yep. it's really close yep. to wheeling. Um okay. so I went there, which was super cool, fun experience, but then of course I uh tore my rotator. Um I was supposed to, you know start as a freshman i was super excited um but then right before season i think it was like a month before season i tore my rotator so then i couldn't even play sports so um i ended up i ended up transferring out of uh, west liberty and went to ohio state uh so my sophomore year i was at ohio state and um this was right before they were switching from quarters to semesters yep. So anyone who's familiar with like how that works with college, like it, it really changes the schedules up pretty significantly. And okay. so going into that my been, what, 2010, 2011, 2011, I think. Yeah, 2011, because 2010, I graduated high school. And then, yeah, so 2011, 2012 would have been my sophomore year. Okay. So, so, yeah, going into my junior year, they were like, oh, we're going to switch to semesters. And again, I, I'm trying to, you know, at this point in my life, I'm trying to like make it make it myself. Right. And like, yeah. well, if I switch to semesters, I'm not going to be able to work at all because the, the program I was in, which was speech language pathology, was going to cause me to have classes from like morning to evening. And I'm like, I don't want to have to rely on my parents for money. Like, I want to work. So <laughs> junior year, I ended up transferring to Muskingum University. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up there. Uh, joke's on me. Um, <laughs> it worked out. It's fine. You know, again, I wish I just would have went there in the first place and, you know, probably would have saved a ton of money by living at home and all that good stuff. But didn't end up playing any sports because obviously my shoulder was still hurt. I never got surgery or anything like that. Um, but I think it was a blessing in disguise. I, I was I was pretty burnt out, I think, with, with the sports and just not having a lot of time. And it can kind of gave yeah. me more time to focus on my academics and and um, just life in general, you know, and I was able to work yeah. and, and all that good stuff. Um, you know, it's um, first I have to ask, are you still on the volleyball circuit? Because, you know, I, I play at Flanagan's every week. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I yeah. So, you know, Trish, uh, Trish. Conrad with yes Oak. yes so she um was last year I played um on a club team or uh, sorry sand volleyball team with her and uh, her brother and a few other you know people in real yeah. estate over at the Goat in uh, Gahanna okay um, did that but then I decided not to do it this year but I'm 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 itching to get back into it so yeah, yeah I'm oh, a free agent a, there you go that's <laughs> awesome so you end up you know. Um, jump into to really three different colleges um yeah. you know th in your college career and ended up going back to to basically your hometown college yep um did you end up graduating i did yeah in uh, four years too i transferred and i still did four years of college so i thought that was pretty impressive like, i don't know how i don't know how <laughs> i did it, to be honest with you i should have added like a year or two to my college career but yeah, yeah i ended up doing uh i got the you know the standard communications degree right yeah uh, which yeah. i think was uh, actually super helpful for me and where i'm at in my career now um but of course me wanting more i ended up after i graduated from undergrad I ended up uh, applying to Syracuse University for my master's. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, in digital mark, digital communications with a focus on marketing and advertising. And then I got accepted. Um, cool. It's kind of cool thing to think about. Um, the, we were the first class in that program to actually do it virtually, kind of like what we're doing here, you know, like yeah. Skype or, you know, whatever that Skype was our platform at the time. Okay. Um, so, you know, we are 20, I think we had 22 of us in the in the program. And, you know, we were from all over the, the country and we would meet every evening over, you know, whatever Skype, whatever the platform was and do our class, which was kind of cool. So I ended up getting my master's from Syracuse. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of growing up high school, college in a nutshell. No, that's awesome. Um, yeah. What um, so once you graduated, did you then dive into to that career? What was kind of your career path up to up to real estate? Yeah, so I had an interesting career path. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I I'm glad. I'm so glad that I did everything I did because yeah. I'm here where I'm at today because of it. And I had some experiences for sure. So um, 
when I graduated Muskingum, I was still living kind of in my my hometown area, New Concord area. Um, but I knew I wanted to get to Columbus. Um, I just was like, I don't know what kind of career I'm going for at this point with a communications degree, but I just know I need to get to Columbus because I know that's where I'm just going to have more opportunity. Um, so I ended up taking a job with BMW um, Financial and uh, took a job there. Um, I, you know, right out of college, moved to Columbus, did that for a little while. I was in the customer service side of it again, just trying to get make my way up here. Sure, <laughs> wasn't sure. that I, for me? It just wasn't what I wanted to do. But again, it helped me to be able to like I don't know, just work with people, which was what I wanted to do. I knew I, whatever I decided to do for a career, I wanted it to be with people. Yeah. Um, did that for a little while. Then um, you know, things in life happen. I'm getting really real and raw here. So um, whoever's listening, feel special. But a couple <laughs> things happened. You know, I was in Columbus, you know, didn't things weren't kind of panning out as much um, as I had hoped. And I ended up taking a job back in my hometown selling radio. Oh wow. Like radio, radio like radio ads? Yes. Okay. okay. Radio advertising. So I'd write up the ads for my clients. And then they'd either come in and record them or I would record them for them. It was like a whole thing. Again, I'm from a small town. So like radio advertising is huge there. Like okay. people love it and it works, right? Because it's such a small town. So small town, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's all about owning the mind share, right? It, exactly. And, and it works. It still works for them there. So, yeah. I mean, you know, everyone listens to the radio in the morning, listens to their, you know, favorite radio person. So um, did that for a little while. But again, knew I, that's not where I wanted to be. Um, I wanted to be in Columbus. So um, a girl that I graduated college with from Muskingum, um, she had been up here in Columbus and became a loan officer and was like, hey, you know, I don't know what you're, you know, if you're open to any opportunities, but I became a loan officer, uh, mortgage loan officer. I think you would be a great fit for this. And I was like, you couldn't have asked me at the, you know, the more perfect time. Uh, I was like, yeah, I'm looking to get back to Columbus. I mean, I'm open to whatever. So <laughs> go and get my mortgage loan um, originator license. <laughs> um, go become a mortgage loan officer, move back to Columbus. Um, did that for about three years and then um, was approached uh, by a realtor who I was working with as a loan officer who was like, hey, would you be open to getting into real estate being a realtor? And I was like, never actually even thought about it. Um, but it makes sense, I guess, you know, I've been a loan officer and, and then I was like, I do kind of sit and look at my phone, um, for houses when I'm not even looking for houses. So maybe, <laughs> maybe I should do it like, you know, for a career. Yeah. Well, then I became a realtor and that was, um, July of 2018. And so, yeah, here I am. So what, um, three times, well, th this is the third time, right back to Columbus. What was the draw? you know, for you, did, was it just the city? Was it, I mean, like for me, like I'm from a small town as well. Yeah. Um, I bounced around, but you know, ultimately my parents are still back there. Yeah. Um, I still go back there. And, you know, for me, it was once I graduated, I always joke, but my dad would have charged me rent if I would have moved back home. So I might as well just mm -hmm. figure it out here and pay my own rent here. <laughs> um, but what was the draw? Like for me, it was just like, like you said, I mean, opportunity. Um, those that are from a small town understand small town mindset. I, I wanted to get away from that. Yeah, um, for sure. So what was the draw to Columbus? Yeah. And, and again, I love my hometown. Again, I love everyone there. I do love the small town, like feel like you just yeah, yeah. know everyone and you know, you, I don't it's know. Slower too. It, yeah. Slower too. But like for me, um, you know, my whole family is still back there. Every, everyone, um, which is, you know, totally fine. But for me, I was like, I don't know. I just feel like I see like a bigger picture, like, you know, instead of just graduating from college, I decided to go get my master's. Like, I just wanted more. I've always yeah. just kind of wanted more. It's not that I've not been content with my life. It's just that I felt like if I wanted more, I needed to get somewhere that had more opportunity. Um, and then of course, you know, growing up, it was so funny because, you know, our big trips were like to Columbus, you know, to Easton, <laughs> <laughs> to Polaris. And yeah. so like, I'm like, I want to live there, you know, <laughs> which Columbus is an awesome city. There's bigger cities, obviously, but like, I don't know. I just felt like there was more opportunity. Um, just, you know, the mindset was different. Um, you know, just the culture is different. And I just felt like this is where I wanted to be. And so I've been here since uh 2014 um okay. so yeah 
yeah, 2014. So. What, um, so when you, when you took the opportunity to, um, get into, I guess was the BM, BMW financial, was that just the back end or was that more of a sales job? No, that was literally customer service, like calling in issues with, so yeah. then your real first experience with sales is probably the the radio radio spot. yeah yeah first experience um, which i think was really good for <laughs> selling something that like to me it was it was it wasn't hard to actually sell it there because again everyone did it everyone you know was all in so um i i kind of had the opportunity when i when i got that job that the person who i was kind of she was moving into a manager position and she already had a portfolio of clients. And then I just kind of took over that portfolio. So it worked out, right? Um, I just had yeah. to, you know, drive around town and go visit and try to like upsell them to like do like, you know, remotes, which are where we come set up at your location and you know do prizes and stuff. It was, it was a whole thing. Yeah. So <laughs> that was my awesome. first sales experience. So I was just going to ask, was that, you know, did you grow up with that kind of background of sales or entrepreneurship Not at all. or anything no. like that? No, not at all. So, um, my dad, um, he, my parents are, are pretty young. Um, my, when they had me, they were 22 and 20. Um, mm -hmm. my dad worked at, um, a plastic factory and then he became a, um, a state trooper. And so he's been a state trooper for, I don't know, 20 years or so. Um, and my mom, um, she worked for a nonprofit for a really long time. Oh, there's my dog. <laughs> just woke up. Um, <laughs> um, she worked in a nonprofit for a while, and then she actually ended up working at the radio station, which is how I landed that job. Um, so okay. she's like kind of like their office manager. Um, um, so and then my sister, um, she now owns a hair salon back in my my original small hometown. Um, but before that, she did like nursing. So there's really no like entrepreneurship just wasn't a thing again small town it's kind of like go get a job that pays you a set salary you yep. work your set hours and you know you get your 401k and all that good stuff like so i i don't know where i got this bone inside of me <laughs> here so <laughs> yeah no you know it's awesome um yeah. and that's you know that's the whole thing like i said about about this podcast and why i love interviewing you know, just agents that are, are successful at all different levels um, because we all have different backgrounds. Right. Yeah. You know, and the one thing I got tired of is when I got into the business, you know, you do the disc profile and it's like, if you're not a DI or an ID, then, you know, you're going to struggle. And it's like, eh, not really, you know, it's just figuring out what works for you based off of your personality. Exactly. And like when you do those disc profiles, it's almost like it's a negative thing that your, your profile tells you who you are. And they're like, nope, no good. And I'm like, wait, yeah. what? I'm a good person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you were approached with this opportunity to come back to Columbus, but yep. be in on the the lending side. Yeah. What, you know, I always, I always, um, I always say when agents come to the, to, to our side, you know, Hey, you're coming to the good side, right? You're coming, you're coming 100%. to the good side. What was, what was that like for you for those, for those three years? Did you enjoy it? Um, um yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it for sure. But again, just like parents, I have a huge respect for loan officers. Um, I did it. It it was super stressful. I mean, like, I mean, if you put, think about it this way, like you're asking people for their social security number, you know, like how much money have you saved over time? How much money do you make? Um, can I have your firstborn? Like, it's like all these like super intense questions. And like, don't get me wrong. I love to like, I love to get to know people, but like, I also don't, I don't, I don't like to ask like deep questions that make people feel uncomfortable. So in that time, I always felt like I was making people feel uncomfortable and, you know, trying to just make them like, have them know that they could trust me, you know, to take care of them. And it's a huge financial decision. Like, you know, I've got to get your loan approved and, you know, and, you know, it's just, it's, it was, it was tough and, and not that I didn't enjoy it, but I was excited to get into the real estate side of it because I literally said, I am tired of asking everyone for their firstborn. Like, I'm just, I don't want to ask for that anymore. I just yeah. want to know the fun things. Like, what do you want in your house? Like, <laughs> fun? like I want to know those things, you know? Yeah. So it was a good experience and it's really helped me in being a realtor to have that experience too. So, so what was the real motivation? Was the real motivation was you, you liked the real estate space, but you just didn't like asking some of those hard personal questions? 
Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's what it was. I mean, I, like I said, I enjoyed helping people like that. I mean, that's a huge, you know, you're that whole part of being loan officers is, is a pretty big thing. I enjoyed helping people, but it was just like, you know, um, and the, the company I was at, so again, I was only in it for three years and, and it was, it's hard, you know, like just in real estate to build up the clientele. So a lot of it yeah. was like cold business. And so I'm calling people that have no clue who I am. So it's like, I really have to like do work very hard at trying to get them to feel comfortable giving me all their financial and personal information. And it was just, honestly, for me, it just, I, I didn't find that to be the best fit for where I wanted to be. Yeah. Now I bet, I bet though, looking back at it now, it's probably helped you a lot on this side, this side of the business when, you know, cause I always say like, when I'm, when I'm coaching new agents into the business, one of the hardest questions for me on a real estate agent standpoint in the beginning was, oh, how are you going to pay for this? Right? Like, hey, did you talk about financing? Because the f money, is, you know, taboo, right? Like typically you don't talk about money to other people and all of those other things. And yeah. I'm sure it's, it's done um, wonders for you uh, on the real estate side because you've had that, not just, you know, the hard questions, but understanding that whole process on the other side for sure yeah and and you know like they tell you in real estate school like don't don't act like a loan officer because you're not um so I, I really have to draw that line but it, it's nice because you know you're you become that like person that your clients like confide in and they ask questions it's like hey my loan officer is asking me for this is this like normal and i can 100 percent say like yes like you know whatever they're asking you for and that's what i like try and I, I feel like i have a great relationship with my loan officers that i work with because you know like i can kind of like tee it up for them and, and yeah. give them a better chance at like my clients being more um comfortable with like giving them what they need because i just tell my clients like listen like it's gonna seem like they're asking for a lot and it may not make sense, but whatever they're asking for, they, they absolutely have to have it. Um, and because I have that experience and I had to do the same thing. Um, yeah. yeah, it's been it's been really, really, really helpful having that background for sure. So and as a loan officer, were you 100 percent commission or? Uh, yes, I was. Yep. Yeah. So I'm always curious when people get into the business and obviously you had a, a different stepping stone into the business from the real estate agent side. Um, you know, because a lot of people come from careers where it's not commission based and mm -hmm. it's not sales based. You know, mm -hmm. it's like real estate's usually like the second, third or fourth career that that an agent's doing. Right. Which is fine. But um, I'm always curious. Did you have did you have a lot of supporters? Did you have a lot of doubters when you're like, hey, I'm I'm making the switch and I'm diving in yeah. you know, into the real estate space? And, oh, you know, I'm not being a loan officer anymore. Now I'm going to switch over. and I'm going to become yeah. an agent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I had, I had, I had a ton of support, but of course being from a small town and like, you know, my family didn't have any experience with, you know, not making money unless people use you for, you know, the service you're providing. Yeah. Um, you know, they were of course nervous for me. I mean, you know, it's like, Hey, you kind of got to make it. And if you don't, you don't make it is, is, you know, and, but they, they by no means didn't like, they supported me for sure. They sure. were not supporting me, but they were for sure trying to be that, you know, person behind me, like, you know, just making sure I, you know, was, was processing everything that I was doing. And, and, you know, um, so I had, you know, they didn't doubt, but they were, they were nervous, which I don't blame them. Um, but you know, they supported me and I just had to bet on myself, you know, yeah. um, and I just had to go all in and, you know, and, in real estate, it was tough. Um, the first year I always tell people I almost quit. Um, I, I almost left after my first year and, and stopped doing it. And I'm so thankful I, I did not because here I am today. And it like, this is just like what I love and what I'm doing. And yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's one of those things. I think, uh, entrepreneurship sales, you know, hundred percent commissions, it makes you, you know, it makes you, I don't know, a different person, I guess. Like you really have to be genuine and be real, which I think is what helped me. So, yeah, I think you said something super important. You bet on yourself, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, the one thing I liked about real estate was there was no, there's no floor <laughs> and there's definitely no ceiling. Yeah. Right. So if you don't make it, uh, yeah. you know, you're not making it, but yeah. you know, you, but if you, I always tell agents, if you truly believe in yourself and your abilities and your work ethic, um, and that you're going to show up, 
bet on yourself 100%. because the potential and the upside is just far greater than any other job. Well, I shouldn't say any other job. Yeah. Than the majority of jobs mm -hmm. of what you could potentially make there. And, and when you do that, you now have a cap. Yeah. You know, you're only worth a certain amount to that person or to that company. Yes. So, yeah, exactly. Um, I talk to Asians about that all the time, betting on yourself, but you got to have that work ethic, that drive, the willingness to show up. And one of the things that, you know, you've experienced and most agents experience that most people don't talk about getting into this business is the mental side of it. You know, mm -hmm. the grind of, of, you know, dealing with the sales falling through or the rejections and, you know, all of those things. So let's dive into, yeah. so you got licensed in 2018, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's dive into, you know, those first couple years, um, successes, failures, you know, what did you think about uh, as far as how to build your business when you first got started? Man, yeah, um, it's it's been a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster every day, but it, the roller coaster is getting more fun for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's always fun. It's just um, the, the hills are the hills are a little bit higher, and we're going a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so the first year, um, so I was with another brokerage. Um, uh, was uh, there for about four months, and um, just wasn't the right fit for me. That's literally all there is to it is wonderful brokerage, you know, enjoyed everyone there. I just was looking for, again, something more. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, found EXP, made the move. So I was, you know, licensed July of 2018, came to EXP December of 2018, and I've been here ever since. So um, truly, I feel like, so I was, I was on a team for that four months. Um, and, but I truly feel like my career started when I joined EXP, which would have been, you know, December, January, right at that point. Yep. And that's when I, that's how I kind of gauge my career. Um, so my first year would have full year would have been 2019. And I didn't know how to get business, right? Because the previous company that I was at when I was doing um, loans, it was, you know, they paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a month to, to get, you know, leads and then you yep. would just call the leads. So that's how I, you know, got business. So now I'm like, okay, I'm not working. Like no one's giving me, no one's giving me business. So how do I get it? Didn't know. All I just immediately started doing was just working my sphere, um, which I think is like kind of the natural progression of real estate is you, you know, start out with your sphere and then, yeah. but, um, when I was a loan officer, I was trying to do both. Actually, I was trying to be a loan officer and, um, a realtor, but I wasn't, my the loan company I was with wouldn't allow me to do both. They were like, you kind of have to choose. You either are here or you become a realtor. And I was like, well, I think because I was, you know, considering being a realtor, I probably should just go that route. So I quit the the company, have no income at this point. Um, and I ended up getting um, a part time job at, at a golf a uh, golf course. And um, so I was trying to use that for supplemental income. And um, it was it just wasn't enough right so i mean i did i did what did i do um 10 deals my first year i think eight ten i can't remember um but obviously it wasn't enough to live and you know i was doing this part-time job and it was just a lot right like i also wasn't investing in my business i was just trying to i was just hoping it was going to come to me um, trying to survive. I mean, you're in survival mode at that point, right? Yeah, so. literally. Yeah. Well, I was survival mode, but I also like wasn't doing what I needed to do to, mm. to like propel my business yeah. forward. I was I was yeah. just sitting there hoping it would come, uh, which was a mistake. <laughs> um, and then so my real estate mentors, I you know went to them. It was uh, no, no, it was like October of 2019. And I was like, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Like, I think I think I got to get out. And they're like, pretty much just gave me tough love. And they're like, just suck it up. You know what you got to do? Like, look at your background. You know, you're a go getter. You're, you know, you know what to do. You just have to do it. And obviously they gave me more advice than that, but right. I needed that, you know, that kick in the butt to kind of get me to be like, okay, Candace, you're not going to quit. Like, just don't, don't quit. Cause what are you going to do? <laughs> go back to being a loan officer. Um, so in 2019, October, 2019, I was like, okay, well, I got to get business from somewhere. So I started putting it into Facebook ads. Um, it was kind of the most, the, the most inexpensive way to kind of just yeah. start getting some business. So I did 10 deals my first year. And then once I started putting money into that, that Facebook ad, my second year, I did, I think I did 30 deals. 
Wow. So it like completely propelled my business. I did like 1.8 my first year, 7.3 in my second year. Um, so I was like, okay, I think I got this figured out now. <laughs> Not was quitting. It, was it directly from Facebook ads? Like, is that where um, a lot of your business came from? Or did you, oh, was that kind of like the, um, the kickoff to like, okay, now I actually have mentally, I have to start investing into my business. And this is kind of like a starting point. Yeah, it was a starting, it was a starting point. So it was just like, I didn't have a lot because again, I was working a part-time job at a golf course. Like I wasn't really, right, making money, right. you know what I mean? Um, but it was enough for me to be able to kind of get some business started. I got a lot of business from that ad. Um, and mind you, this was, this was back when like rates were like super low and prices right. weren't as insanely high as they are now. Um, you know, so it was, it was a lot easier, I guess you could say. Um, it just kind of worked out. I was, I was, you know, advertising to the right clients. It was more of a warm lead coming in versus me calling them cold, but I got a lot of business from there. And then I did get some repeat business from like client or not repeat referral business from clients my first year. Yeah. And then my sphere, I was really working my sphere well. So, all of that combined gave me my, you know, 7.3 that I did my second yeah. year. So do you now just because I'm curious, because um, I, I try to show agents that it doesn't take it doesn't need to take a ton of money mm -hmm. to actually have success in this business. Yeah. But you have to be intentional and you have to be consistent in your approach. Do you remember? how much you spent per month on the Facebook ads? Yeah, 150 bucks. <laughs> I figured it wasn't going to be a lot um, yeah. because one of the things that, but sacrifices, right? Like yeah. I talked to agents about this and, and you made a sacrifice when you left being a loan officer to being a real estate agent. Psh, I got to pick up a part-time job. That's a sacrifice. That's yeah. a sacrifice sometimes to ego, right? Or whatever, for right? Sure. Swallowing, swallowing your pride. I'm not saying, you know, for you, but it was I tell, 100%. Agents, <laughs> I tell agents this all the time. I'm like, I see you walking in with, I drink energy drinks, a Red Bull every single day, or, you know, a Starbucks coffee. Did you know that you could run five $1 Facebook ads, you know, every single day? And that's the cost of that Starbucks coffee, or that's the cost of your energy drink. Yeah. Are you willing to drive past the gas station and not pay $5 or drive past Starbucks and not pay $5 for that drink? So that way you can put it into your business. Yep. Exactly. That's simple because five dollars a day is one hundred and fifty dollars a month. <laughs> exactly. Know? Exactly. It was it was as simple as that, John. Like I was like, well, what I'm doing up until this point is not working. So the one thing I'm not doing is investing in myself. And again, betting on myself. I was worried I was going to spend money and then not get anything out of it, um, which yeah. is why I wasn't spending the money. But once I, I just swallowed, you know, swallowed my pride and I just was like, all right, you know what? Let's get the part time job. Let's get some money. Let's start throwing some of that money into my business. It completely blew my business up. Um, yeah. You know, it was as simple as that. And, and you know, <laughs> going from one point eight to seven point three, that one hundred fifty bucks a month suddenly didn't hurt as bad. And, you know, I'm still running that same ad, which is funny. I just have updated it. Um, yeah. Now I'm running it at like three, $300 a month, you know, no yeah. big deal. Right. But like, it's so nice. Like I, I had to, I had to get into the mindset. Like if I get to get one deal off of this ad, it's going to pay for it for like two years based on my $150 a month budget. Yeah. And then, you know what I mean? It's like a huge return. It just yeah. makes sense. I just had to get to that mindset. The mindset and just stay committed. The fact that you're still running it three years later. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Not like that's so, so triple your business yeah year two yeah. what's you know lead us up to current day yeah so um did did 7.3 so that would have been 2020 last year uh so then i for 2021 i set a goal for eight million i'm like all right you know did seven three would love to do eight but i'm always i'm that type of person that was like i don't want to fail so i don't want to set the bar too high right you know <laughs> Um, so I did, I, you know, set it for eight. I ended up doing uh, 9.3 in 2021. Um, again, just ramped up my ad, um, but I'm all, I was also starting to spend money in other, other places, yep. more so trying stuff out. You just don't know until you try it sometimes. Yep. And, but then I, I started to really see like a huge, like jump in referral business from past clients and my sphere. Um, so I did, I, you know, I think I did 33 deals in 2021, which going from seven, three to nine, three, just price point increased, um, which makes yeah. sense for the market because people were, you know, 
offering lots of money for houses at that time. Um, And then um, this year I'm on pace to do just over 12 million. So yeah. And, and, you know, price points have increased, but which makes sense for the market again, it's just kind of where we're at compared to, you know, 2020. Um, And a lot of my business honestly has been referral based past clients, repeat past clients, referrals from past clients, my sphere, my sphere referring people to me. Um, yeah. That's been 95% of my business this year. So, And I'm assuming you're just super intentional with, I call them business pillars, with that that business pillar. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to be every day. I, my biggest thing is like, you know, um, I'm just putting the money in where, to where it makes sense and it works. But I'm also trying to be, um, like you said, just intentional with my conversations that I have with people. Um, I, I used to be afraid to be like, Hey, I'm a realtor. Make sure you tell people you, you know, you know, that I send them my way. But now I'm like, Hey, I'm a realtor. I would love to help, you know? And it's just like, again, the mindset. And I think it just comes with confidence and just being in the business long enough now where I just, I'm more confident than I was before. And you, you know, you've got to, you can't be afraid to have those conversations with people. So, yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I love seeing, you know, that, that trajectory and, and just yeah. where you're going to go. And I want to, I want to kind of fast forward now into the future and look into the future. Um, what are, what's something that you're truly looking to accomplish over the next 12 months? Um, so that's a great question. I'll be honest, John, again, I'm being real here for you. I'm not a great goal setter. Okay. <laughs> I don't like to set the bar too high cause I don't want to fail. Um, uh, but yeah. I also want to have something to go for, sure. um, you know, and it, I don't know, it's worked out for me, I guess I, the less pressure I feel, the better I do. Um, sure. but for me, you know, I, I did hit icon this year, which I was really, you know, excited about because the last, you know, last year I just missed it. And but didn't um, you, you just missed it by a couple of deals, right? A couple of deals. Yeah. 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 And, then, yeah. and so my anniversary year is January one and I actually hit icon last month. So I had a few months awesome. to spare, which was super cool. Yeah. So I think I would like to do that again next year. I mean, it's a huge benefit with being with our brokerage. Right. Yep. Um, but also it's an awesome opportunity to be able to like, do more and give back um, to be able to actually get that award. So I'd like to hit icon. Um, I think that too, I want to, I would like to do kind of like what you're doing here. I think it's cool that you're doing this podcast and you do this and you're, you're investing in and being um, intentional with, you know, having people, you know, on a podcast to just talk about life, talk about real estate, talk about whatever it is. I'd love to get that started. And honestly, I need to be way more consistent with my social media in general. So those are kind of like my three main 12 month goals, I would say. So. No, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. What's a big goal for the next five years? I know you, I know you're not good with goals, but I got to ask. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I should really start doing the goal thing. I know it's like, it's like a terrible like business practice, I feel like, but um, that I don't write these down. But yeah, Here's um, the way I look at it, right? Like those things, uh, I think we, you know, typically it's like, oh, what's your one year, five year, 10 year, you know, whatever. I look at it as like, what's, what's your North star? Yeah. Like, what are you truly going after? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So for me, I mean, I, and, and this is totally, in my opinion, it's totally possible, which is why I, I try to think about it every single day. I mean, it's always in the back of my mind is the next five years, I'd love to be at a point where, which I'm getting very close, just referral business because referral business is the best business out there. Right. Like people are already trust you coming into it. And, and, um, you know, that's, that's not really money spent. It's just being able to, you know, bear the fruits of your labor and, and, you know, getting to that point where you're just getting referral based business. So I'd like to just be referral based only. Um, and then also like with EXP, just with our, you know, different income opportunities, I'd love to be at a position where that, that, um, you know, additional income stream that we're able to build through the bit, our business. I love to have that at a point where, um, that's just a huge, you know, icing on the cake kind of part of being in the business where if I have an off month, it's not going to matter as much because I've got this additional income stream. So for me, I think it would just be, you know, you want to get to a point in your life and your, in your career where you're, you're working, I don't know, smarter, not harder. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? I want to be able to just truly have that, you know, pressure free um, career in business where I'm working with people who want to work with me and who've been referred to me 
but also to be able to have, you know, that additional income stream to support my, you know, my career. So if I want to take, you know, a vacation, I'm not, you know, worried about again, because if we're not working, we're not making money in our business. Yep. yep. That, that, that would say, I would say that's my five year goal. So what do you think that you need to do in order to, uh, to accomplish that? just continue being intentional, right? Like make, make your, you know, raving fans, right. Um, for, for clients, you know, make them want to, you know, put my name on, on a post when someone's asking about a realtor and, uh, refer all their friends and family to me. Like, I just want to continue to do that, continue to build those relationships. Um, and then on the other side with, you know, building my second income stream, it's the same thing. It's just, you know, on the side of being, you know, intentional with realtors that I have conversations with and yeah. just again, being genuine. Um, and I, I mean, I, I think it's, it's too simple to like, think about, I don't know. It's like, it's not that hard. I think if you're right. just yourself, you're intentional, you're genuine, and you just truly want to be, be there to, to, to help people. I, I think that's how all of that kind of just falls into place. So yeah, no, I love it. I mean, we, uh, we like to real estate's simple, but it's hard. It is. Yeah. You know, um, it's in the simple form. Who did you speak with today about real estate that you never spoke with to before? Yeah. Uh, and also who did you follow up with today that you've already spoken to about real estate? Like that's real estate, yeah. right? That's sales. That's, just that's sales in general, is. but yeah. um, same thing on the other side, you know, with, with the, the agent attraction side of, of what we have available. It's the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. how do I get people to know me, like me, and trust me? You exactly. know, that's what it comes down to. So exactly. um, that's all. That's so awesome. Um, I have I have a question that I don't put on here for a reason because I, I, I just want it off off of the rip. But okay, I'm nervous. What 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 <laughs> is a um, what's a legacy goal for you? What's a goal that you want to hit when you're no longer here? Oh, wow. That's huge. Man, you should give me some time to think about this one. Again, I'm not good with goals. It's so. you know, it's a question that we typically don't um, we don't get asked a lot. Um, yeah. And Mike Doyle uh, was reading a book a couple months back, and he's the one that kind of, he was like, "Man, it's in this book." And he asked me, "It's the question is what's your 100 year goal?" But I like the legacy part better, um, and I think it's one that I don't know. I don't think some of us think about a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, uh, my legacy goal for me, I guess the, the thing that would make the most sense for me to think about this would be to go back to like my childhood, like when I was little, how I, I just always wanted people to like me. I wanted to be that, you know, that kid that, you know, people are like, wow, you know, she's a good kid. Right. So I, I think for me, my legacy goal would just be for people to, to be able to be like, Hey, you remember like Candace, she, you know, she was just an awesome, good genuine person that cared about people and helped a lot of people. Like, I think like a goal for me is just to just be able to leave that behind and just for people to a lot of people to just remember me as just being a good person that just truly cared about people and wanted to help people. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's that's a big enough goal, but I, I, I'm more I'm all about just, you know, trying to be a good person. And that's what I want to be known for, whether I'm super successful in my career. Now I just want to be known for being a good person and, and caring about people. Um, so I would say, I'd say that's my goal. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Um, Candace, I, I want to be respectful of your time and I, I appreciate you coming on here and sharing your story and, and your journey. Um, and I always end with this question. If you could give our audience you know, one piece of advice that, you know, maybe that you wish you had starting out or, you know, that you talk to agents about all the time, what would that be? Um, I, you know, we already talked about it earlier. It's just like bet on yourself and just have confidence in who you are as a person and, and don't settle for just don't settle. Um, I think that would be my, my number one piece of advice. It's because, you know, if I would have just settled and not bet on myself back in 2019, I would have quit. And then like, I would be not be where I'm at today. Like we just, we just built a new house. And if you would ask me four years ago, if I'd be where I'm at right now, I would have said, absolutely not. There's no, there's no way. Right. So I think it's just like, you know, betting on yourself, having confidence in yourself, aligning yourself with the right people um, who ha have the mindset or have, have what you are, are hoping to achieve. Um, and then just, you know, going all in, that would be my, that's my biggest piece of advice. So. 
Oh, that's awesome. Um, Candace, thanks so much for coming on today. Those that are watching, um, Candace's phone number is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you're an agent and you know you resonate with, with, with her story or if you just want to connect with her, make sure you reach out to her. Um, she wants to help you succeed uh, in this business. If you are someone that's looking to buy or sell here in Central Ohio, uh, connect with her. Uh, she wants to help you with that as well. Um, Candace, thanks so much for for coming on here and and you know truly you know sharing um, your journey to this business and and you know just showing people that there's not one path um, and there's many ways to to find success in this business. Yeah, for sure. No, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm terrible at, at talking about myself, so it's nice when <laughs> these, these moments make me do it. Um, but it also helps me to, to remember where I came from and how I got here and just to continue to be thankful for where I'm at. So I appreciate it. Candice, for those that are listening in, um, what's the what's the best way to reach out to you? Um, so I would say text, uh, just it's the easiest thing for me to, to, to quickly respond to. So it'd be uh, my phone number is 740-255-0468. Um, or you can find me on social. Um, all of my social platforms are um, at your realtor can. Um, so you can find me there and send me a message. Awesome. Candace, thanks so much. I appreciate you. Um, and if I can ever do anything for you, uh, please reach out. Will do. Thank you. Likewise. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, John.